In this video, I'll show you how to paint Commander Dante, Chapter Master of the Blood Angels and Lord Regent of the Imperium Nihilus. And yes, I have a cold, so chances are this video will sound at least 10% sexier than all of my others. Let's get painting. The first thing I've done is prime the model using Retributor Armor Spray. Now, if you don't have this, you can use the normal Retributor Armor Paint over a black uh, prime coat. Now, with the Retributor Armor Spray, you do need to put several thin coats on to get it to build up nicely. The first thing I'm going to do is block in all of the black parts, and the colour I'm using for this is Black Legion Contrast Paint. Now, this covers fairly opaquely and is fairly fluid, so it goes over really nicely, but you can use whatever black you prefer. If it's a bad and black, AK black, whatever you've got, I'm just preferring to use Black Legion for this stage. If you're not sure which bits you need to do, then just check the box out. But essentially, I'm focusing on all of the tubing of his undersuit, the gun casing, and the trim of both shoulder pads. Next up, we'll paint all of the silver areas, and the colour I'm using to base this is Lead Belcher. And the reason I'm using Lead Belcher is it's a little thicker, it's got a little more grip to it. So when painting over another metallic coat, it's probably a little bit better than what I'd normally use, which is dark aluminium from Valeo Metal Colour. There's not a huge amount of silver parts on this. Again, just check the box art for reference. And of course, don't forget to paint the jump pack as well, which I've got separately, uh, just pinned to a cork base. Now, as I intend to shade the loincloth with the same colour that I'm using on the silver, it makes sense to base that now as well. And the colour I'm going to use is corn red. So this should go on okay. You may need a couple of coats in some places and make sure it's not too thick. Be as careful as you can, but don't worry if you do make any mistakes, you can always go back and tidy them up later. That's one of the main reasons I'll be doing the armour last on this model. With that loincloth base, I'll then start to shade all of the silver and that red loincloth with null oil. Now, this is a very straightforward step. You're just popping it over those areas, and in particular with the case of the loincloth, making sure it flows into all those recesses. So just work your way around, take your time, and just make sure it's completely dry before we get to the next step. We'll highlight all of the silver first, and the colour we're going to use for this is Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Now, if you haven't got Chrome, you can use Stormpool Silver, it's absolutely fine. In terms of applying this, we don't want to put huge amounts on, which are looking to catch the most raised edges. Uh, particularly when we come to things like the weapon uh, and the axe handle as well. We just want to make sure that we're just using the side of the brush, not too much paint on it, and just pulling it along those sharp edges to get a really nice crisp highlight. To start highlighting that loincloth, which is a very dark, rich red, we'll go back to corn red. And we'll just use this to highlight those edges, leaving the darker, null oil covered parts in the recesses. So just take your time with this, make sure you've got a really good point on your brush. Next, we'll take some Wasdaka red and we're aiming to get another very fine, thin highlight inside that previous coat of corn red. We're not going absolutely mad with this, we're just focusing along those edges and the raised folds of the loincloth. Finally, we'll take a little bit of squig orange, and we're going to use this fairly sparingly. Again, the aim is to get this inside of that Wasdaka red uh, coat on the previous step. Uh, it's worth mentioning here as well, you can probably see it in the video, that I'm painting the grip on the axe exactly the same way with exactly the same colours. Next up, we'll highlight all of the black. Now, because this is a HQ character, we want to add just a little more highlighting than we normally would. So the first colour we can use is Eshin Grey. Uh, and in terms of how we're applying this, we're making sure we've got a little bit on our brush and we're going to drag the point of the brush along those sharp crisp edges of things like the leather belt, the rubbing tubing, obviously the gun casing, and anywhere else we've got black elms on the model, such as those uh, shoulder guard trims as well. To bump up that highlight a little more, we'll take some Dawnstone. And the whole point of this is to try and get it inside that ashen grey highlight from the previous step. So just take your time with this, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, and your brush has got a really fine point. This is where dragging it along those edges will really come into its own. If you do make any mistakes, you can always paint over it. If you go too close to any studs or bolts, you can always just put a little bit of Black Legion or Null Oil around those as well, just to add some shading back in uh, and help that part of the model stand out. Now, Commander Dante has one bright red shoulder pad, like all the other Blood Angels. And to get this started, the first thing we're going to do is base it using Mephiston Red. And obviously, around the uh, trim of the shoulder pad, we've kind of finished that, so just be careful working your way around. Otherwise, this is fairly straightforward uh, to get moving. To make that pad really nice and vibrant, we need to add some Evil Sun Scarlet. Now, we're not going to highlight with this. We're actually going to paint this over the majority of the shoulder pad. So we will need two thin coats of this to get a nice solid base cover and this will really start to 
uh, add some vibrancy to the red which will help it stand out against all the other bright elements on the model. Finally we'll just take a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange and all we're looking to do here is put a little bit of an edge highlight uh, along the insert of that shoulder pad uh, just to add a little bit of extra brightness. Moving on we'll paint the laurel on Dante's head next so the first thing we need to do is base that using Caliban Green. Now Caliban Green can be a bit of an awkward paint to work with in that if you thin it a bit too much it doesn't cover very well so just make sure that you put a nice solid base coat of Caliban Green over that laurel and don't forget as well you may need to paint the inside uh, to make sure that you capture all of it. Next up we'll highlight that laurel using Warpstone Glow and in terms of the areas we're focusing on this is fairly straightforward because the laurel has got some nice raised areas exactly where we need to put that Warpstone Glow. So really key you don't have too much paint on your brush uh, and just make sure you've got a good point as well and all you need to do is just drag it along that raised leaf detailing and this will give you a nice initial highlight. The final highlight we'll add on that laurel is going to be with Moot Green. And again, this is another fairly straightforward step. All you need to do is make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you've got a good point. In terms of the areas we're looking to focus on, we're looking to just focus on those parts of the laurel which are pointing upwards. So we're going to go all along the top row of the leaf and a little bit uh, along that the lower part of that top leaf. And we're also going to catch the top uh, sculpted part of the bottom leaf as well. Uh, and that's going to help us give a really nice vibrant green laurel. The model is starting to show a little bit of shape now, so let's move on to all those purity seals. So the first thing we need to do is base them all using Rackarth Flesh. Now you don't want to fall into the trap of putting this on too thick, uh, so if you need two coats then just accept it and just take your time and make sure it's dry before the next stage. To shade all of that parchment we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia. Now it's really key here that we don't let it settle too much in the recesses. We literally just want to stain it all. We don't want it pooling there because it'll be too dark and too kind of yellowy brown for, for what we actually want. We'll start to highlight that part with back up next. So we're going back to Rakarth Flesh to start with. And what we're looking to do is just paint back over those areas, leaving some of that Seraphim Sepia in the recesses. Uh, but we're doing this in a fairly jagged manner. We're stabbing in it, we're catching edges and things like that because we don't want it to be a smooth coat. We want to give it the impression of old worn paper. Lastly, to highlight this, we'll take some pallid witch flesh. And again, we're looking to catch those edges, but we're also looking to highlight those raised folds and those bits of paper that are going to catch the most light. So we're not going to do this in a smooth layer style. Again, we're just going to stipple around these areas because that'll just add some more texture. Uh, and give the impression of worn old parchment. It's time to base all of those white elements on Dante, which I know it is Korax white time, I'm afraid. I know you don't all like it. I do like it. I don't care that it's lumpy. A little bit of water, it covers fantastically well. Now, there are huge amounts of white parts on Dante, so just be careful around areas you've already finished. There's a lot of work in terms of the chest, around that belt buckle, the shoulder pad, the wings, and of course, don't forget his jump pack as well. Well, we've got a nice even coat all over those white areas, we're gonna take some Soul Blight Gray. Now, the reason I'm using Soul Blight Gray is because it just gives it a harder look to the white as opposed to Apothecary White, which is a bit softer, and I think that suits armor better. If it were cloth, I'd use Apothecary White, but for armor, I like to shade it with Soul Blight Gray. So just make sure this gets into all the recesses. Now, when that Soul Blight Grey is completely dry, it's time to highlight the white. Now, the colour I'm using for this is Bold Titanium White from Procryl. You can use whatever white you prefer. If you've got white scar, go for it. It's absolutely fine. The key here is to leave that Soul Blight Grey in the recesses and to get a really nice, tidy, sharp highlight. The other thing that's really key to do with this bright white as well is to highlight all of the gems on Dante. So you'll have seen in the previous step that I'd covered them with the white, uh, the Corax White. So by adding the bright white over it gives us a nice undershaded highlight ready to add some contrast paint to get some nice easy gem effects. The colour I'm going to use to base all of the gems on Dante is Blood Angels Red and no the irony is not lost on me. Uh, so just be careful with this, you don't want to get it on any of those white parts, you can go in and tidy them up afterwards but it'd, it'd be a shame to go over the work you've already done. So just take your time with this and paint it over all of the gems. Again don't forget to do the jump pack as well. When that's dry, we'll take a little bit of Ungore Flesh and just paint a very thin line on the bottom right of all of the gems. And once we've done that, we'll take another little bit of white and we'll just add some tiny, tiny dots 
on the top left as a reflection. And if you want to, you can add a little bit of gloss varnish here as well to give the gem some extra shine. It's time for Dante's Power Axe next, and we're going to do this Power Glow uh, a little bit rough and ready. So the first thing we need to do is base the entire area using Stegadon Scale Green. We want a nice smooth coat to this, just take your time. If you need to put two on, do that. Uh, but we do just want a nice even coverage across everything uh, for the start of this step. Next up, we'll take some Sotec Green. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edge highlight everything on the axe. Uh, and that includes the power nodes. Once we've done that, we're going to have a little think about the parts we want to have a little bit of a glow to them. And we're just going to stipple around these areas, building up the Sotec Green. And uh, what you'll find is this starts to blend into the uh, Stegadon Scale Green underneath quite nicely. Uh, and this will give you a really good basis for building up that uh, electric effect on the axe. Next up, we'll take some Temple Guard Blue. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to firstly edge highlight all of the areas of the axe, including those power nodes. And again, we're going to focus on the areas where we've got most of that electricity gathering. And we're going to stipple the Temple Guard Blue on. Now, if you find that the transition you do here is too harsh, you can always just glaze over it a little bit with some more uh, blue, either the... Um, staggered on scale green if it's really too bright or if it's just a little bit too bright you can just glaze some of that soap deck green over it from the previous step moving forward we're going to take some baharoth blue and again do exactly the same so edge highlight the blade focus on those areas where you've got most of the power gathering and we're also going to add some uh, crackle lines across the axe at this stage as well uh, and what you'll start to find is this really coming together now even if it's a little bit rough you can always use glazes to even it out if you need to to further bring some glow to this axe, we're going to take a 50-50 mix of white and that Baharoth blue. So it's a very, very bright, bright blue that we got here. And again, we're focusing on edge highlights. We're focusing on those power nodes and those areas where we've got most of that power gathering along the axe blade. To finish off, we'll add some dots of white along the sharpest edges of the blade where we've got most of that power gathering and those power nodes and any other little bits across the sparks where we just want to add a little highlight and bring some attention to now at this point you may decide that you want to just maybe make it a little bit more blue in which case you can just glaze over some of the previous stages but i'm quite happy with how this has turned out like i say it's not super super smooth but i think it gives that nice impression of an uh, electrically charged axe blade it's time to move on to the armor and get dante finished so the first thing you need to do is go back and repair any mistakes you made using retributor armor to make sure that his gold armor is completely gold then I'm going to take some Reitland Flesh Shade and paint this over all of the armour. So I'm taking care not to let this pull too heavily in the recesses. If you remember right at the start we had the light shining on Dante. That kind of gives us the impression of where the highlights are going to be. So it's not going to be uh, edge highlighting per se on the gold. So it's really important we get the shadow right and we don't have any really blotchy transitions. So just keep an eye as it dries and if you need to just move it around and suck some up make sure you do that as well. If you do have anywhere that's got a little bit too much right flesh shade, once it's dry, then paint back over it using Retributor Armor. The first highlight we're going to use is Liberator Gold. Now, if you're not sure where the highlights go, first thing, check the box up, because even though that's non-metallic metal, it shows you where the lights are going to be. Essentially, what we're looking for is any armor plate and any edge that's facing upwards is going to catch the most light. So rather than putting an edge highlight on everything, we will be highlighting entire parts of the armor in some instances and this is a really nice effective way to get a nice bright gold that look really good on the tabletop and catch lots of light once you're happy we'll go to the next highlight and the color i'm use this is white gold from pro Krill. now if you haven't got this paint you can mix a little bit of storm post silver into your liberator gold not too much because it'll go very silver very quickly and we're doing the same kind of thing we're looking for those edges and parts of armor that are going to catch the most light so it's not a bona fide edge highlight across the board. Again, it's going to be volumetric style highlighting. Uh, if you're putting it on a little bit too thick, then you can always try stippling it on in some areas as well. And this will help it just blend in a little bit around areas as you build up the density of those highlights. The last highlight is going to be with Chrome, again from Valeo Model Air, or Stormhose Silver, whatever bright silver that you've got. And the key point with this is to use it very, very sparingly. We just want to catch those edges that are going to catch the absolute most raised light. And uh, this is just going to really make the armor pop. Now, if you put too much on, it will start to make the armor read silver, which we don't want to do. So we're really adding just little dots here and there on those brightest parts of armor. 
And there you have it, Commander Dante is done and ready to obliterate his foes on the tabletop. Now, I bet you're thinking, well, if that's how we paint Dante, how do we paint Blood Angels? Well, I've got just the video you need right here. Make sure you go and watch it after you leave a like and a comment on this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.